Hi, I'm Justin Barrett. I'm president of Blueprint 1543. I'm a psychological scientist and former university professor. And this is the second episode in a series that I'm doing on successful aging or aging successfully. I'm inspired a bit by this book by Daniel Leventon, a cognitive neuroscientist. Um, so I'm building off of some of the suggestions he makes at much greater length and in much greater detail. Uh, it's a really solid book with solid advice, mostly focused on how to invest in our brains as they age so that they age well and that we can live a good life even in our final quarter of our lives. So think of this as the After 65 series, and I'm trying to make it practical with some science-based advice. After is an acronym. A which stood for activity, and this is the second F. And this one, F stands for fun. Now, those of you who are from various kinds of church traditions like I am, you might think, well, that doesn't sound very Christian. Let's be honest, honest moment here. We're not known for being fun. And that's a shame. We should be. Fun, happiness, joy. Oh, wait, there's a word that we resonate with because in Galatians chapter 5, we know that one part of, one component of the fruit of the Holy Spirit is joy. And joy is very difficult to disambiguate, meaning wise, from fun and happiness. Our life should be characterized by moments of being happy, having a good time, and well, that's fun. And by fun, I don't mean anything frivolous here. I don't mean that it doesn't have meaning and depth. And in fact, it turns out the, that meaning and personal investment leads to things being more fun than the trivial kind of dancing through life, not taking things seriously. You might also notice that the kind of full, abundant life that Jesus calls us to, that he promises to his disciples, I've come that they might have life and have it more abundantly, should be characterized by positive feelings. It should be characterized by joy, by happiness, by, dare I say, fun. And then if we have the eyes to see, if we look throughout scripture, we see different moments where people really are having fun. David has fun. Sometimes when he's in his worshipful states, he's having fun. He was a musician, so he had fun with music and with dance. In a more dour tone, we hear in Ecclesiastes uh, the, the advice to eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. It's a little grim, but it is still advice for aging people that, you know, eventually we will die. And so there is something important about eating, drinking, and being merry. He kind of backs off of that sort of dour tone and says, and in all of these things, we should be loving God and, you know, giving God his proper due in our lives. That's part of the complete picture of eating, drinking, and being merry. So I think there's a really important place for fun, for laughter, for happiness and joy in our lives. And that's certainly the case as we're aging. In the activity episode I mentioned, it's really helpful to think about three classes of activities or three ways to think about activity. We need to engage in meaningful activity. We need to engage in physical activity. And we also need to engage in new activities. And maybe, I could have said more explicitly, it really helps to be motivated to do these activities if we're having fun. We can do all of these sort of activity things as a duty. Okay, every morning I'm going to wake up at 6 a.m. and I'm going to walk for three miles and it's my duty. And Well, as we all know, we lose motivation if we're not having fun with it as well. The good news is, by and large, in general, psychological research suggests that when we're active, we actually have more fun than when we're being more passive. Now, of course, when psychological scientists or any kind of scientist look at something, they don't use the word fun. There's no fun literature in psychology. Um, there's not even really much of a happy literature in psychology, but usually they use the language of subjective well-being because that sounds really cool. So when do we have more subjective well-being, which is kind of code for happiness? Well, of course, when we have fun, we're, we're happy. But what are the situations in which we have that increased happiness? Well, what some of the research seems to suggest is, or actually I think I can be a little stronger than that, what it clearly suggests is that most of the time being active, exercising what we might call our agency actually gives us more fulfillment. It makes us feel happier. We have more subjective well-being than if we're being passive. 
Okay, and what do I mean by exercise our agency? I mean that we exercise our ability to make change in the world around us, to do, to accomplish, to succeed or to fail. That we are engaging, we're giving a little bit of ourselves into the activities that we're doing. Those are the activities that give us more fun, that give us more happiness, that give us more subjective well-being, all else being equal. I think it'll help if I give some specific examples to work out what that means. And it means things like, instead of listening to music, which might give us pleasure, it might give us some enjoyment, it's even better if we produce the music by singing, by playing a musical instrument. And you might think as an older person that, oh, well, it's too late for me to learn how to play a musical instrument, or I used to play, but I don't anymore, and it's hard for me to. It's not too soon, no. It's not too late <laughs> to try or to resurrect an old skill that you had for most of us. Is it hard? Yeah. Will it take more time? Yeah. You got to be patient with yourself. But if you found, you used to find real enjoyment in singing, sing more. You know, you'll, your voice will find its way back. Or try the, the new musical instrument that you've never tried before. Even if it's a relatively simple kind of thing like a, a mouth harp or I don't know, or a harmonica or something, or now you've always wanted to play the spoons or the washboard or the gut bucket or, I don't know, or the piano. But there are lots of possibilities out there. I've shifted, actually, I used to play guitar. I've shifted re more recently to ukulele, and part of it is it's just easier on my hands to play ukulele than guitar. But the point is doing the production of music is actually is going to give more happiness, more fun than just consuming the music as a, a spectator. And you can take that principle and play it out in other domains. We have more fun playing, say, board games or trivia games than watching Jeopardy on television or watching Wheel of Fortune. We have more fun when we are, I don't know, playing pickleball than if we're watching people play pickleball or if we're pitching horseshoes than if we're watching people pitch horseshoes or playing cornhole than watching people play cornhole. Those things in general, again, barring sort of injuries or other kinds of issues that just prevent you from doing these things, it gets you active and it's more enjoyable. But we often don't think that way at any age because it's just easier to be a, a passive receiver or a passive audience member. But life wasn't meant to be passive. Life is a participant sport. It's not a it's spectator sport. So we need to get in there and try these things. Let's see, what, what are some other examples that I came up with? Oh, painting. You might think, look, I'm gonna get a lot more enjoyment going to the local museum and looking at paintings. But actually the research suggests that you're gonna have more fun. You're going to enjoy it more in a more meaningful and enduring way by just learning to paint yourself. Even if you're not very good at it, just exercising that and giving it a try and, I don't know, having fun with it. Just relaxing into it, trying stuff out. That's not to say going to the museum isn't a bad thing. Of course, it's a, it can be a really great thing. And you can engage with some really fabulous, wonderful works of art there. And that's a very good kind of activity as we age as well, especially if we're really studying it and learning about the artwork and learning about the artists and so forth. But notice that gives more, is more of ourselves investing in. That's more agency. That's more participation than merely walking through a museum and going, oh, pretty colors and walking on. So the point is, the more we give into an activity, the more fun we can get out of it. Because it's just kind of how we are made as animals. Another example, one that maybe uh, is easy to miss. Reading a story can be much more fun, actually, than watching it on film, strangely enough. That isn't to say there aren't some wonderful film adaptations of books out there, but most of us find the reading the book actually more enjoyable. We have more fun reading than we do watching. Why? Because it takes a little bit more investment from ourselves. And again, this is part of how humans are wired. We get satisfaction by engaging, by activating our agency. We're not meant to be passive kinds of beings. This one might be a stretch for some of you, but I'm I'm gonna put it out there in case this does fit you. I actually find it more enjoyable to cook 
prepare food and then eat it myself than just going out and eating. Not all the time, because sometimes I screw up the food and then, well, it's not as good. And sometimes I have really wonderful restaurant experiences, but usually those cost a lot. And so I actually enjoy the process of cooking and even trying out new things that I haven't cooked before or new food preparation styles. That's really enjoyable. And it's something that doesn't sunset very early in life. You can do that to very late in life safely and comfortably. And you can really enjoy it even if you screw up and what you produce isn't very tasty after all. Um, it can still be a really great fun activity. Again, all of these examples I'm giving, they fit a particular pattern. That is, the more we give of ourselves into the activity, the more fun we can get out of the activity. I encourage you to bear that in mind. And even if it's easier to stay on the couch and turn on the TV, take that little bit of extra effort, invest that in. Now, I'm going to try to do something a little more active. I'm going to put myself into the activity a little bit more so I can get more fun out of it. So that's, that's a general principle for fun or happiness that we get out of the activities in our lives. Of course, there are other dimensions here. And one that I will come back to in a later episode has to do with how we build our relationships. But the sneak preview is simply that most of us have more fun when we're doing things with other people than when we're not. Some of us who are a little bit more introverted, yeah, okay, we need some some we need to do some of these things all by ourselves. Generally, we don't, uh, for instance, read books with other people, though you could. My family and some of our most fun kinds of reading experiences has been when we read to each other, which requires reading out loud and doing a little bit of oral interpretation of the stories. That can be a lot of fun. But I respect introverts. I tend in that direction too. We sometimes need time alone. But as social beings, as social animals, we get more fun out of most activities if we're doing it socially, if we're doing it with other people. So put lots of your agency into your activities. You'll get more fun out of them. Do them with other people. You'll have more fun with them. And if you're having more fun, you're more likely to stay active and keep doing those sorts of things. So the first letter in after was activity. The second letter, F, was for fun. Make sure that you're having plenty of fun as you get older. Don't forget about the fun. Your life isn't just duty. It's not just routine. It's not just drudgery. But find the fun in your life. Partly that's going to be through engaging yourself, putting more of your agency in, and part of it's going to be doing stuff with other people. Not just sitting around and talking, but doing real activities with other people. So, A and F. Tune back in for T, E, and R, the next three episodes in this series after 65. Thanks for joining me here. As always, if you have questions or comments, please go ahead and put those in the comments section. If there's a topic or a particular issue you'd like me to address, please let me know. Like, subscribe, share this series with others or any of our episodes with others who might benefit from these little nerdy bits of advice. Thanks for joining me today. Have a great day.